Ja,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,ga,
ngon <laughs> Um, and the next verse focuses on what's essential to accomplish the benefit of others, and that's also higher perception, higher knowledge. So I just said to Geshe-la that I find it strange why is higher perception here, higher knowledge, um, the cause for accomplishing the two collections, is it not more the result? And geshe says here, definitely it becomes the cause. It is the cause for accomplishing the benefit for oneself and for others. And it becomes the cause for gathering the two accumulations of merit and wisdom. So a little bit further on, there will be an explanation about the meaning of what is translated here in English as higher perception, Munshe in Tibetan. So at this point, the text is saying that in order to generate a vast amount of merit and therefore gather the collection of merit in a vast way, this kind of perception, this higher perception or higher knowledge is necessary. Without that, it's not possible. <laughs> And then the next verse is saying that if one wants to quickly accomplish awakening, if one quickly wants to awaken, then one needs this high, so called higher perception. Without that, there is no path towards enlightenment. So this is the short explanation of these verses, and then there comes the thorough or more detailed explanation. Sonam so what is the skillful tool to gather merit and wisdom? What is the very special or extraordinary cause for gathering that? It is the sixfold the, or the six forms of higher perception, which, which are the forms of higher perception that all Buddhas of the three times possess. Mm. 
Ramdo Yagoja drew to Marie, Shendo Yagoja drew to Marie, Sazan Rashen de Dun Yagoja drew the Chevala, Nepotomusha drew the Guare, said Yerwa. And especially the future Buddha Maitreya said in the uh, in one of the famous works called uh, Abhisamaya Lankara, that these six forms of higher perception are essential for accomplishing the benefit of oneself and others. Without that, it is not possible to, to generate a proper activity for the benefit of oneself and others. Nadine and also the Buddha himself in one sutra on the Prajna Paramita said that a bird without wings cannot fly. And in the same way, a bodhisattva without higher perception cannot accomplish the benefit of sentient beings. So what might happen, for example, that someone, someone has a very authentic intention in practicing and accomplishing the Dharma, but somehow um, they get on the wrong path or they commit mistakes on the path or practice in the wrong way. So then a bodhisattva who possesses higher perception sees that and by seeing that can then point that out to such a, a being or individual and lead or even without pointing it out but they have the capacity to lead them then on the right path so without the capacity to see what's going on so to have, without this higher perception a bodhisattva could not perform that kind of activity which is so crucial which is actually one of the most essential enlightened activities of bodhisattvas to lead the beings onto the right path the right path that re leads towards enlightenment so for this reason higher perception becomes such an extraordinary extraordinary cause for performing the benefit of sentient beings and then there is Chatapuchunjaja, 
Shandu Jubal and Rotogumare. What is Sumu Yagwa? It's like with this example of the bird. So if a bird as a fledgling does not grow the power in the wings, does not get gained strength in the wings, it cannot fly in the same way. A bodhisattva without higher perception cannot perform the benefit of beings. <laughs> And for this reason, it is essential for us to develop higher perception. Because without it, we cannot be fully efficient in working for the benefit of beings. Of course, there could be some kind of benefit, but it wouldn't be the same benefit as with higher perception. Shane so <laughs> Mm. <laughs> so one for example one form of higher perception here is the higher perception um, that's called the power of miracles and with that kind of quality a bodhisattva can see where a buddha is abiding and go there directly to receive Dharma teachings, for example. And in the same way, when a sentient being then is in need of a Dharma advice, then the Bodhisattva can also go towards or to the place of that sentient being and therefore then act for the benefit of this individual. And therefore, without this form of higher perception, then the Bodhisattva would be uh, not knowing not having the capacity to do this, just left and sitting in his or her flat, drinking coffee and making aspiration prayers. <laughs> so just kidding, of course. <laughs> yeah, if the Bodhisattva is a Westerner, then they will pre preferably drink. <laughs> English, English. English tea. If it was an English man or English woman, they would probably have uh, English breakfast tea or something. Yeah, I don't know. Then after Manedala, in the name of Kashiyama, Chatun to come cup chum drill. Cup chum, the case chat. Yeah, in Aranda, there are uh, some quite some. Um, English people from time to time, and they are always the ones with the biggest teacups, like really big ones, <laughs> when they come to the teaching. They are the ones with the biggest cups. <laughs> yeah, that's all that. That's the name. Shingi Sim Shibin Moshi, the Yoba, you know? Shanky? Shanky Sim Shiva. Mm-hmm. 
这个是不是得当得也看不当,是不是得当得没办法,三不当,这个是什么,天图不要吧。这个是,当开始是吗,当开始是吗,是不是日期,这个没有打完了,你知道吧,你都得打完了,你知道吧,身上打完了,你知道
And then uh, one other form of higher perception is called the divine eye. And that form of higher perception knows what will happen in the future. Okay, and then there, the last one is the higher perception of the extinguishment of contaminations. So the higher perception of the extinguishment of contaminations, contamination means affliction. So the higher, in, in easier words, the higher perception of the end of afflictions. So this is a form of higher perception that's only found in the mind stream of noble beings, while the others uh, can also arise in the mind stream of, um, of normal sentient beings. Ordinary beings. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whether these forms of higher knowledge or higher perception are beneficial or not, whether they create a beneficial effect or not, that all depends on the motivation behind them. So if the motivation is based on compassion, loving kindness, uh, love, and so on, then these higher forms of perception of knowledge will work for the benefit of beings, meaning serve in accomplishing their well being and in removing suffering. If instead the motivation is based on egotistic thinking, then this won't result in the benefit of beings, but it could still have some kind of benefit. That and when there is the highest, we saw the highest form of that present that is only for extraordinary beings. So this highest form of this, the highest form of highest perception was 
the extinguishment of contamination. So when that's present, then the individual is of extraordinary benefit for sentient beings because he or she possess the capacity to point out the whole of the Mahayana path. Because, and, and on top of that, of course, this is rooted for such an individual in bodhicitta. At the same time, this kind of higher perception can also be present in non-Mahayanic practitioners, such as the hearers or the solitary realizers. It can be there and it can also not be there. However, if it is present, then it is used for pointing out the path towards cessation, the path towards liberation. It won't be used or there is not the capacity to point out the full Mahayana path, but they have the capacity to point out the path towards liberation. Um, therefore, the ultimate or the highest way of benefiting beings is, of course, that of pointing out the path towards either liberation or full enlightenment, and therefore leading them onto this path. And in order for that to be possible, there needs to be the teaching of the Buddha in the world. Without that, it would not be possible to teach the, the dharmas, to give the transmission, to pass on the path to somebody if there is no path laid out. And therefore, then could, there could also not be the realization of that path, which are the two aspects of dharma. If you recall, there is the dharma of uh, transmission and the dharma of realization. So the two aspects of the doctrine. So these need to be present. And what is necessary for the Buddha Dharma to abide in the world, there needs to be the Sangha, the, no, the group of the noble ones, the Sangha. And what on what is the Sangha depending on? The Sangha, in order to abide, depends on practitioners of Vinaya. And therefore, if there are as, um, practitioners, if there is a group of practitioners of the Vinaya, then the Sangha will abide. And therefore, the Buddha Dharma will abide because it is alive through the Sangha. And therefore, then the benefit of others can be accomplished.
Kindinge Della Kindinge Della Tatara Chasa Neva Neva Sanamedu, Kindinge Della Dene, Kenji Giganda, Kindinge Della Dene, Neganda, Kindinge Dem Neva Song and Jimba, you know? No Sangi Dama Neva Song and so did it. Kindinge Demena, Sangi Dama Yamada, Sangi Dama Mena, Simjan Lapendi. Mune to get the Yamata. Manager. Any caricure and joking, you know, Kari. Can do it, can do it, tell a change, change your mom, whichever, you know. Fine. And if for some reason, such as continuous criticism of the Sangha and so forth, the Sangha gets smaller to the point of disappearing, then it is not possible for the Buddha Dharma to abide. And therefore it is also not possible for the benefit of beings to be accomplished. Yes, sir. Mm. Ah, yeah, that's the same. That the name in the Gala, the name George Banda Adishagi, the name down Dom Dumbala, that Kerangi, Nezu de Gelatane, Tanda Demanche, Nezu de Gelatane, Kerangi, Jundungi de Yabu, just two to the Chagore, Sene, Sengeng and Rodentia Guiana, Sangi Gitamane Guia, Tamba Tang, Yabuch Guia, Tame, you are like Jundin, Jundula Ralegger. They are doing the Malara legger. Sene in the Grangata, doing the beginning of the day. I wish that so to get them, Tashi Chevron's crown, visiting in Alola. Adisha down from the Malatis Sunja, and this one at the Jatins, Rachan Jatin Gumbas, and Otuska down from them there. What is Chata? And the glorious Atisha had a heart disciple called Drum Tumba, so he one time to his disciple Drum Tumpa, he said that he should establish a Sangha. And why? Because it is essential for accomplishing the benefit of beings there to be a Sangha, because the Sangha makes sure that the Buddha Dharma remains alive and is practiced. And therefore it was, it is very essential that that happens. So, the Buddha Dharma to stay alive needs a Sangha and the Sangha needs practitioners of the Vinaya. And that's why Dromtampa then not very much later established the so-called Rating Monastery. Desums, Hatch desums, Hatch Sana, Acho Adishagan, and the Sungi do, Sungi are. And I'll take it another Malanjum, Sigma. Ah, Tandanian Rodin, so that Cashin would check to me to the Yine Adisha Korang and Alape, Shower Ten Machines and Iron. Then Sangi get them by Gabber Chendius. Jidin come there, Sangi get them by Yurin to Nebu. That Della didn't kill him till a rally get those. Then I never use it, take out tenner. They can do me tea, would you suit what she can use, Sanna? Ah, Adisha Godinson, what shall marry? Drum the bear. And Drum Tampa therefore said that this is the advice that my teacher Atisha gave me. So although I am not able to benefit beings at large, still I really have at heart to stay close to what my teacher said. And I also do want have the same aspirations than him to uh, spread the Buddha Dharma to make sure that it abides for very long in this world. And therefore, because I know that this is depending on the Sangha, I will try to establish a Sangha. Ah, that's right. That's the next question. 
So just to again, where are we, where is this coming from? We are in the text at a point where it said, saying that in order to gather completely the two accumulations of merit and wisdom, we need higher perception. And if we if if one has generated, cultivated higher perception, if one trains in higher perception, then it is said that during the 24 hours that make the day and during the two times of the day, which are daytime and nighttime, one will continuously gather to two accumulations of merit and wisdom. So And if that higher perception is not present, then one might still try to accomplish and gather the two accumulations of merit and wisdom, but that won't be very, um, the effort won't result in accumulating a lot of merit and wisdom. It won't be very powerful, the effort. Why? Because the most, effective and powerful ways of accumulating merit and wisdom come from accomplishing the benefit of sentient beings and as we have seen working for the benefit of beings is relying on higher perception <laughs> If one wants, therefore, to accomplish quickly enlightenment, to awaken quickly, then higher perception is necessary. And in order to develop higher perception, one needs diligence. Ah, that is it. And therefore, it is uh, essential that one cultivates diligence or the word but that's also used as joyful effort, which is a really nice translation, joyful effort. But this is necessary for developing higher perception. And then what these verses are saying is that that will then also generate an absence of laziness. And therefore, knowing all of this that has been said so far, that itself will be fuel for joyful effort. And now we are the, the next verse without the attainment of calm abiding, 
Higher perception will not occur. Therefore, make repeated effort to accomplish calm abiding. So this verse is clearly stating that, again, without calm abiding, without the practice of shamatha or shine in Tibetan, it is not possible to develop higher perception. That's Mm-hmm. And then the commentary explains that there are some people who have somehow naturally some of these powers of higher perception. Some have it uh, through the power of, of birth, some through the power of mantra, through the power of, of substances, some, for example, remember their previous lives just like that. They are born, they are, and if for some reason they remember previous lives. So the text says, although there can be higher perception related to these things, that's not the higher perception that's really important. That's not really the kind of higher perception that's interesting for us because it's not really special. And what kind of higher perception we need is the one that helps us to accomplish the Dharma path. And these kind of uh, powers of higher perception that were mentioned or related to, to that that was mentioned, they are not supporting the Dharma path really. They don't benefit that. So what's important, what's the important aspect of higher perception is the one that develops through the power of meditation. And the text says that what's important for us to develop is the calm abiding that entails the pliancy of body and mind and pliancy is referred to an experience of, of joy and, and flexibility of body and mind that creates a 
generates a feeling of joy. So this kind of shamatha, shine is what's needed for us. And also the kind of calm abiding shine, shamatha that arises through contemplation, learning and meditation. Just that. Who's Devere Mushin Even the gods, so there are different realms in which there are the so-called gods or heavenly beings. And sometimes there is the mention of the six types of gods of the desired realm. Then there is the, uh, the seven abodes, uh, 17 abodes of gods in the Zukamroa Neri Chutundi, in the form realm and so on. So all these gods, they do possess higher perception and they do possess uh, the quality of, of calm abiding. However, that's not benefiting them in their practice. And therefore these kind of higher perceptions and calm abiding powers are not really amazing. They are not mind blowing. And what we need, we want the mind blowing forms of higher perception, the really cool ones, which are the ones that arise from study, contemplation, and meditation, and not the ones that are inherently there with birth and so on. Because although these naturally present capacities, can benefit a little bit, they are not really able to make a big impact, not for our own sake and also not for the sake of others. So we want the other kind. We want the calm abiding that arises through learning, contemplating and meditating and the higher perception that arises from learning, contemplating and meditating. <laughs> Young <laughs> Young 
So, in order to develop calm abiding, shinish or shamata, there are different tools and in the doctrine of the Buddha, these are summarized in mainly two categories. One are the nine tools or steps to accomplish calm abiding. They are also explained mm -hmm. in the Abhi, uh, sorry, the Abhidharma Samuchaya by Basubandhu. Um, and then there is this next set that are the so-called five, I'm sorry, the eight remedies to the five mm, mistakes, one could say. That's what. Some <laughs> ตาตุสเตเดโรคมเจตุสาสาตาตุกุดุนาวอดนิสตาตุกุนดุนาดุนิสเซเนกุยนาริมปะตังโกเดเรตังอจุกุมเจตุกันนาริเนริมปะตัง
And for example, you might meditate on Tara or the or statue of the Buddha or Manushri or statue of Teresi. And therefore, what the practice here entails is not necessarily, you know, the action of the eyes going towards the object. So in fact, when we practice uh, calm abiding, we should never, you know, like, it's not about staring at an object and try, trying not to get distracted, but it is about generating a mental reflection, a mental image of the object of focus. So this means that it's actually about meditating in the mind you know not going with the eyes outwardly and and being projected onto the object but generating a form of attention where the image in the mind becomes very clear of our object and this is actually not very easy because we also want this mental image to become very clear and precise <laughs> ที่มีมัจจิจุกุจะจะเนี่ยได้ยงมีดูชาชัยมาตาสโลมปาวยกันที่ซุงดอเซลาเดคือมิชะเบเนนจอร์จังโกเรสตะคือมาชะเบเน
And for this practice, it's very helpful to start with the support of the statue of the Buddha. And one starts therefore with this really material object, the, the statue as a support. And one should really try to get clear about the image one is seeing. So really seeing what's the shape, what's the size, what's the, well, how are the shoulders, how are the placement of the hand of the statue, how is the gaze, and so really getting a clear per visual perception of the, this object of meditation. So first one will train in that way. And then when, when one is familiar with the object, so this will take some time, of course, and then when one is familiar with that object, one then can continue to practice with the mental image of that object. So here it's advised to imagine this object then as a very, the, the mental image then of that object, the Buddha statue, in a very small manner, because apparently this really helps to get very clear and precise. So this is not just one day of practice. This is really a process. And of course, what is necessary therefore is persistence, but joyful, joyful persistence, joyful effort, no, not uh, succumbing to laziness. And one should also resist the, the need if it doesn't work after one or two days or a while to to give give up all together or to change the object of one's focus because the the power lopen power acharya pavo also said that if you train like this at one point it will work this is how the training itself goes <laughs> Nam Yambe, Rabdum de Combe, Comchejan, Lonetonda Dagejan, Tinzi Jova Mingo, Tisher Tinzi Tolule, Sunga Yella, Lani, La Lene, Senodresha, Tito Sundra. I'll let you true chance, right? And then verse thirty nine While the conditions for calm abiding are incomplete, Meditative stabilization will not be accomplished, even if one meditates strenuously for thousands of years. Thus, maintaining well the conditions mentioned in the collection or meditative stabilization chapter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Cadu and of course, we always consider the instructions of the, the, the Lama or the spiritual teachers, philosophy teachers, meditation teachers, as something very important. However, they are not important if we do not apply that into practice. So if we, we can get all tons of teachings, but if we do not 
continuously like in a in a continuum train if we do not make this something that becomes part of a process if that does not generate a continuum of practice then what's the benefit so for this reason Geshe Domtempa said we are always sitting there waiting for the great instructions, the great amazing teachings, but then we do not try to accomplish calm abiding. We don't train in calm abiding. So the teachings are important, but the practice is even more important of these teachings. <laughs> Kandesung Russell and Ishipotoa also says that we are not really thinking about gathering the causes and conditions necessary for generating samadhi, meditative stabilization, or uh, calm abiding. We do always wish and wait for the great teachings, but we do not think about gathering the causes and conditions necessary for generating calm abiding. That's a mistake, he says. If we do not rely on gathering the causes and conditions for cultivating and developing calm abiding, then how will that develop? It's not possible. So we really should focus on that. If he, he says, Gishe uh, says, if we do gather everything that's necessary for developing and training in calm abiding, then we are definitely able to develop calm abiding. Then the question is, what are these causes and conditions necessary? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And the master Acharya Jangjub Sangpo in a work called the Collection for Meditative Stabilization chapter said, spoke about the essential questions necessary when one wants to develop calm abiding. So the first point he addresses is what do we have to remove when what has to be removed, gotten rid of when we want to generate calm abiding? And the next question he addresses is what 
it are the preliminaries for generating calm abiding. And then he addresses the next point. What do we need to remove or avoid in the actual practice? Mm. <laughs> Yes, the master Aryadeva in one of his works addressed clearly the question of what causes and conditions are necessary for developing calm abiding. So we'll look at what is said there. So, in general, many causes and conditions are necessary. However, there are some that are considered to be the most important ones. So, the first one is to rely on discipline and or we could also name it the correct ethical conduct the uh, next one is uh, to have little desires and satisfaction to be satisfied and have little desires and then the next one is to have a quiet body and a Quiet mind. This one. And at this point, the text, we go back to the, the verses, so that now follow the next two lines in verse 40. Place the mind on any one virtuous focal object, any one virtuous focal object. Understand why it's such a what understand <laughs> 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 Nibashi 
so these four quantities that, that were just mentioned are therefore the most important ones in gathering the conditions for cultivating and training in calm abiding. So just once more, these four are the um, discipline or moral conduct, ethical conduct, then um, having little desires, then satisfaction, and having a quiet body and mind. So when these four come together, then it is said, with that, choose an appropriate focus, an appropriate object. So this is not referring to the concrete object, like a flower or a stone or a statue. This is referring to the focus in, as described by the Buddha in four different ways. So there are four different options of focus and we should choose one of these four. So we will look at the meaning in a second, just for the terms. The first one is called the pervasive focus then the focus of um how to of training in scrutiny perhaps as it could be translated then the focus of learning or scholarship and then there is the focus of purifying afflictions. So one of these four then is to be practiced. Number top of a chebe Sunyes Chicsa Shegido Chata Topala Shaw Sunye Com Jadugala Topala Shaw Sunye Shaguya Sunye Karsha Tumbeko de Kungi and Tumbeko de Kerange Musun Chai Migdan and Diama Topala Shaguya Topala Shaw Sunyes A Yila Shargore Tangi Sunya did it. Topala Shaw Sunyes Chick でるじゃん。たにばでらかれせらで。たてこんこんややややちょっとこでめばちょっとみしゃんとやるば。うん。とこめびれ。で、そにしちらとは。たてやべ。やげしゅうじゅうんで、でやめ。てね。たどなだ
and mental image of this 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 object of focus. And the second point and second aspect of this uh, first kind of focus is the reflection without conceptual activity. So this is as we saw that at one point then in the mind there is a direct perception of the statue, but it's only happening in your mind and it's very clear. And the third point, the third aspect is combining the understanding or con in contemplation that the per appearance that has been generated, this mental reflection, is not inherently existing it doesn't have a true existence it doesn't exist in the way it appears so this is the third aspect yeah, and then the last point is a result of the, the following steps as we have seen they build on each other and the last one is then the point where it, it is called accomplishing all accomplishing all needs and in this point of the practice the stains of the mind are removed so we are at training in in the first step of course first so that is the training in the reflection with conceptual activity so when we practice like like that this first step then we at this point we should really not think various different things but we should remain focused or concentrated because otherwise the mind will get confused or agitated and will not remain one pointedly collected so if you practice or meditate on compassion or on patience or whatsoever then really try to collect to gather your thoughts around this object the The, again, Acharya Pavo said that we should focus really on one thing, when one thing only, and stick to that object of focus, because that will help us stabilize the mind. And if we do have too many points of focus, then that will actually steer the mind and steer afflictions. <laughs> Comjemiba de la, and 
Pijawares. That's some dish and my amateur Tajichamores. Fetch it to you, I shoot the Yamores. So when we meditate, we are training the mind in collecting towards a one pointed focus or one pointed direction towards our object of meditation. And we train in exactly that, in being with that exact object. And that is very wholesome. That's very healthy. So we are, of course, then also training the mind in coming back again and again towards the object of focus whenever it strays. And therefore we are trying to not get distracted. This one. Who's <clears throat> Um, so we have arrived first at the end of time today, but also at the end point um, of a section. And now the next part of the section would be um, talking about the benefits of cultivating calm abiding. So that's a auspicious point to conclude. Is it actually, Gishela is asking, the last session before the summer break, or was there supposed to be a next one, like next week, the last one? I understand that it is the last session until the summer break. Ah, okay, yes. So then, then this is an auspicious moment of going into the summer break. <laughs> Then that um, you need to pay the lessons. Right? Yeah, we have come to the point of talking about the benefits. Mm. Okay, I'm not thank you. Then you know I'm done. So then Gishila will make a prayer. Chanju Senjo Ramuchi, Maji Bama, Kiruchi, Kiba, Me Baya, Kone, Kondo, Devara. Tumi <laughs> Okay. Okay, can I just say, can, okay. um, on, on behalf of uh, Jam Yang Leeds and all of us here, Geshe, we would like to thank you very much for your okay. very valuable teaching over the last few months. It's okay. been a, a privilege and a pleasure to be with you over the last few months working on Atisha's text. And um, we hope we can continue with us in September and uh, we very much look forward to it. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Ah, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house.
Thank you so much for your kind, for being so kind and patient listeners. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, good night. See you in September. See you in September. Have a good summer. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.